So guys, today back for another video on the channel. Today we're here doing a little talk video. I love doing these type of videos. Today we're going to speak about the future of some of the players in the in the Newcastle United squad at the minute. There's some players who might be staying, some players who could be going, some players who need to move on and progress their career. We're going to go through um, the players who I think who are in, in a bit of a rumble at the minute at the club. If you could leave a like button, subscribe to the channel, I thought I've got to do a video. I'm not having everyone here waiting for uploads until later on in the week because Newcastle don't play it on Monday night now so got to get a video out this is going to be the future of the Newcastle United players in the 2023-24 squad I want to say now this is not a keep or sell video I'm not going to be going through every single player I'm just going to go through the players who I think need spoken about so starting off I'm going to be speaking about Jolin a lot of talk was 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 on in January obviously we are in March now in January it went from Joe Linton could miss Man City and then Joe Linton will miss the game versus Man City and then I went on saying Joe Linton will miss the whole season and then I went on to say Joe Linton's gonna never play for the club again and then I said Newcastle, uh, Newcastle can't offer Joe Linton, Joe Linton a new contract Dan Ashworth's fucked off and then Joe Linton looks to be staying crazy crazy scenario what's happened at the club with Joe Linton but for me and I think people can agree I generally think Joe Linton is one of the most important players in the squad Bruno's amazing, Botman's amazing, Isaac's unbelievable, but Joe Linton gives you everything that you need as a midfielder. He can play on the wide on the wide and honestly, from the top of my head, I can't tell you a game Joe Linton's been bad since last season, since like this season's top. Two seasons, a season and a half. I couldn't tell you when he had a bad game. Honestly, he is prolific and the fact that we're gonna make him so good and the story and everything so nice, obviously with him um, really struggling at the club, Eddie Howe comes in, changes his position, and we Hampton's Joe Linton's career. I think it would be absolutely silly to just let him go. He's got the quality to to become the best of the best, and all oh, something always stuck in my mind when we signed him. A player doesn't get valued at forty million. In prior, this is in twenty nineteen. This is before when teams are spending sixty, seventy million on ridiculous players. 40 million for Joe Linton was a big move and any team could have made that move. Newcastle done it and now it's 100% paid off, I think. With my one year left, I think if we give him a good deal, I think he absolutely deserves it as well. It's not like he's been that player hit and miss and, and, and being good and being bad. It's a bit like, I imagine if it was Callum Wilton, he's, he's doing good sometimes and doing shit and he's getting injured. Joe Linton got an injury which wasn't his fault. Um, really shouldn't have went out in the second half against Sunderland, he did and then got injured. But he was a mentor that game as well against Sunderland. He was absolutely class. But for me, can I get rid of him? It looks like he will be signing a new contract, which is brilliant news for Newcastle United. But Joe Linton looks to be staying. Next up on my list is Lewis Hall. And yet again, he still hasn't played. He hasn't. I can't, honestly, I can't remember the last time he played for the club. It, it must have been months ago. And he sat on that bench. And it's not even like he's getting a chance. I, I, we all know Eddie Howe. He wants the best for this team. And we all know Lewis Hall is, is still extremely young. He's only had half a season in the Prem. And then he signed for New Well, he came to Newcastle on loan. It was, for me, in the summer, Newcastle United were itching for a left-back. If we wanted to go into the Champions League, we couldn't have done that with Dan Byrne and Matt Target. And we did do that because Lewis Hall's not had a shot. He was playing centre mid some games. He didn't get his first start on Man City in the Carabao Cup and then got brung off at half time. For me, it's looking at it now, it was it, it's it's a bit too much. Newcastle can't be paying nearly forty million pounds for, for Lewis Hall when we could spend forty million pounds on a left back who would start week in, week out. Imagine if we sign Grimaldo on, on, a, on a free and he's went to buy a Leverkusen and done absolute bits for them, being the best left back in the world at the minute and we bought Lewis Hall who's sitting on the bench behind a, a six foot six Dan Byrne who isn't really a left back I don't think it's a Lewis Hall problem I just think something's not right and we don't know we can't justify and say what the crack is with Lewis Hall because we don't know it could be something personal could be Eddie Howes just doesn't want to risk him but it's like the Lewis Miley situation. Would Lewis Miley really get the, the game time that he, he's gotten because of injury? Probably not. If Dan Byrne and Target were injured, what would Eddie Howe do? Would he play Lewis Hall? Would he try someone else? Would he... Do you know what I mean? It's it's a tricky one to call, but... For me, I think... If we had him... If we signed him for 
at the start of the season, I think you've got to you think, like, mate, mate, look, we've signed him, we'll develop him, and he still is very young, he's younger than me. And then we've got him on loan, and he's got to play a certain amount of games, I don't know how many games that is for him to buy, and then he's not playing. I think it's a bit bit unfair because really he could have played for Chelsea. Chilwell was injured for a bit, and they were playing the right back and left back, and they were changing stuff up, and then obviously Lewis Hall came to the tune and not really given given a chance. So you never know towards the end of the season if it's if it goes tits up for Newcastle and we can't get European football, we'll give them a shot. If Newcastle are going for Europa League, I can't see Lewis Hall um, getting a shot on the team, but. It's a shame, but yeah, again, he's still young. He's got his whole career out to look forward to. So we'll have to. Just, hopefully, it's not going to affect his confidence when he does play and whenever he does play. Another player I want to speak about. It's not really been linked away with the club. It's Jamal Lascelles. I feel like ever since the takeover has happened, it's been like, look, Jamal Lascelles needs to move on for his career. And then for some reason, he always gets linked with Pashikas in Turkey. On honestly, I think. I would keep Jamal Lascelles. Um I think he's proven it. He came in against PSG, and I think there was a game before PSG, maybe. I, I can't remember, but he came in, and obviously he's been the club captain since 2016. It's now 2024. The little things for me that are like, he knows fine well that he's got two centre-halves in front of him who are absolutely sublime on the day, and Sam Botman and Fabian Shaw. It's the stuff on the sidelines, the stuff where you see him with Eddie Howe. He cares about this football club so much and for, for him to to sit there and go look well I'm not going to be getting played week in week out where I want to and where he has played for the club he, he, he's proven that he has been good I think it'd be I think it'd be a shame for him just to just to let him go considering he is the club captain and, and I think he is a good leader I think he's since the championship days obviously it was my first season and I, and I was drum all ourselves as an animal and then going into the second season him as, as, him as captain obviously he should have got picked for the England team, in my opinion, for the World Cup, um, is what it is. There was a couple of, uh, of spells, obviously, under the Bruce Daisy. I think everyone dipped and, and, and was poor, but on his day, he, he's proven it. Kuro Mawani, Kylian Mbappe, he, he was brilliant, and he, and, he, and he really was. I think it'd be so unfair just to let him go. I think it really would be. He played every game in the Champions League, bar AC Milan, away. I think it'd be unfair, and I think... His dedication for the football club definitely shows. Even against Blackburn when he did play, I think he had a good game apart from making that mistake. And that's the, the thing with Jamal Lascelles. He's got that mistake in him, which is always going to be a bit of an issue when he, when you play for such a club like Newcastle. They're never way at at the minute. I think it's if if you're going to keep someone like like Dan Byrne, and I know he is playing week in, week out, but if, you play, if you're keeping someone like that, who's clearly good for the dressing room as well, I think you've got to keep Jamal Lascelles. I think it'd be unfair just to, to let him go. I think it really would be. And I'm going to do this one collectively because I feel like these three players have all been sporting about together. We're going to do Paul Dummett, Lloyd Cavius and Matt Ritchie. It's a tricky one. For Newcastle United, we've got Champions League football played this season. We're trying to progress the football club and... For me, we've got to let players go, and it's a shame because we've got to get rid of some of the other players who are at the club. Some of the players who are out on loan, I can see players maybe like Isaac Kane, maybe signing for QPR because he's been very good for them. I can see Jeff Hendrick, obviously, contract runs up here, go. Jamal Lewis might sign for Watford, or he might go on another loan. The players who are out on loan at the minute, I think when you get them gone and, and, and sold and get them off their books and, and let them play the rest of their career, because I can't see any of the players out on loan having some sort of a career at Newcastle. The players who are at the club at the minute, um, Paul Dummett, he was linked with a move to Ipswich on deadline day. That didn't go through, so he obviously he's still at Newcastle. And Look, Dummett's only been it. I think it was St Mirren and Newcastle, obviously that, that, that was a loan move. He's been in Newcastle all his life. It would be a shame to say Paul Dummett go, but for the sake of the football club, I think we do need to move on players. I think Carris is another one. Apparently, he might get a, a, another year on his contract, but if I'm Carrius, yes, it's good being in Newcastle, a big club and, and whatnot, but your, your third choice, if everyone's fit, it goes Pope to Bravka, then Carrius. I don't think it's fair because he's only played two games for the club, a League Cup final and a away against Arsenal. He, he couldn't get it any harder for the for the lad, but in the games that he's played, couldn't really fault him for the for, for what he's done, but personally I think if he wants to to to, to realise his career, I think he's gonna have to move on if it's to go to the German second division or a lower team in Germany. 
I think it, it might have to happen. And another one yeah, I'm going to obviously speak about is Matt Ritchie. He's been at the clubs in 2016 in the Championship, getting on his day. But I, um, I was I was buzzing for him to score that goal. And it was the interview as well after the game. Obviously, he has lost his legs massively. And obviously, you can tell he's lost his legs. But I think w the passion that he does give for this football club is something that players... You, you don't say nowadays. You can yes, Bruno's very emotional. He, he shouts at the crowd. And he loves it so much. But the passion and that Matt Ritchie gives you every single time he he steps on that football pitch. No one could ever ever fault Matt, Matt Ritchie's passion for the football club. He he wanted this football club to do so so good, and and he was and he he really was. He he changed left back and he under Rafa and. He, he, he has, he, he, he's he been such a success in Newcastle in my opinion, we signed him from Bournemouth, obviously off Eddie Howe, I think it was about 12 and a half million I think in the Championship, but I think everyone remembers Richie in the Championship, he was my favourite player on, on, in, in the Championship, he scored goals, he, he created goals and he scored some important goals for Newcastle, some goals where it made us win the game 1-0, Burton for example, we, were, we beat Wigan 2-1 and he scored the winning goal. The game, the goals like that. I think people forget about. He was the reason why we came up. And him and Dwight Gale and a couple of us. He's done some magnificent stuff for this football club. But it's like the Jamal Asel situation. He is so good for the dressing room, and he is, and he he would he will get them lads pumped up. Would he go into coaching? Honestly, I could see him staying in Newcastle. And for example, say if he does end up retiring, Eddie Howe still is here. I can see him being part of the the managerial team there. But that's way in the future we don't know if Eddie Howe will still be Newcastle manager by that time so it's a tricky one to call for Richie but I think the players like Gillespie and, and players who are, are not playing whatsoever I think we do need to get rid of them and, and start investing in the youth system and, and getting them lads going obviously we signed Alfie Harrison from Man City I think when he's starting to see them players develop rather than just having Asian players sitting on the bench and where they could go on and and realise their career a little bit and get game time because he could like players like Paul Dummett and Carriers could sit in Newcastle and have a nice little bit of money in the bank, but they're not gonna play football. And you gotta think they've got not much, they haven't got much years left. So that's just my thoughts, lads. Let me know if you agree in the comment section down below. That is gonna be the end of this video, boys. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like I said, I couldn't just leave you with no uploads. I had to do a video for the sake of obviously. Newcastle don't play it on Monday night. The preview predicted team will still go out for that Chelsea game. Big game for Newcastle. Obviously, we've got that FA Cup clash. But um, obviously, at the end of the season, you'll see the keep more selling and, and, the, and, all, and all that stuff. And I don't want to do that type of video now because we're in the middle of the season. We've still got 12 or 11 match games left. So, still got loads to play for. Make sure to leave a like, boys. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in the next one.